Hi, um, this is a Maxim SP tutorial to teach someone how to build a reverse delay. Um, I've been I was scouring the internet to search for like a good patch that shows you how to make it a reverse delay in Max because I really like the effect, but I couldn't never find one. So I set out to make my own reverse delay and it kinda sounds pretty nice. So we can start. Um now, the majority of this patch will be made in Gentilda, which is a lower-level uh, interface which works on the sample-by-sample -sample level. Oh, my, my computer is slowing down a little. But everything will work inside Gentilda, but we need to refer Gentilda with a buffer to the ob ob object. Basically, how the reverse delay is going to work is that we're going to store our sound file into this buffer and we're going to continuously write into this buffer um, and then we read back from the buffer um, after a certain amount of samples or a certain amount of seconds but we read, we read back from that buffer back backwards that's basically how we're getting the reverse effect and then we delay that reverse second that reverse second signal so let's go ahead and name this something I'm going to call it delay let's give it something like how big the buffer is. Let's get a waveform tilde out here and let's give it the same name. Cool. So now we have a buffer and we have a waveform tilde to check the waveform. Cool. So now let's instantiate a gen tilde. Now when you open up gen tilde, this is the boilerplate uh, instance that you get. It's like you're adding two signals together. But since we don't need this, we can get rid of it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna refer to gen, we're gonna refer to our buffer that's outside, which is over here. We're gonna refer to that buffer, but we're gonna call it inside gen. So the way you do that is again, call a buffer and you have the same name. Oh, there you go, that's our buffer. Let's zoom out a little bit. So, now we need to write to this buffer. The way that you write to a buffer in gen, or actually anywhere in max MSP is with the peak object. No, that's how you read from buffer. The poke object is how you write to the buffer. So you call the poke object, and you need to give it the name of the buffer that you want to write into. So there you go, you have a poke object. Now this is the value that you need to write it to. Um, the position to write, so the units, um, this this will be in samples. Everything in gen works on the sample level. So just wanted to let you know about that. And I haven't started recording. I can do it now. Let's go back. Yeah. In samples and the channel to write to this, you don't really, this doesn't really matter and the amount of the original signal to preserve. We don't really need that. So we need to send in the, sig the signal that we want to write. So we'll do that within. We can comment it to say that signal to be delayed. There you go. Hmm. Now we need to this will send in the, sig the signal to be written to buffer tilde, but buffer tilde doesn't know um, basically where to write. I did do. Sorry, poke doesn't know where to write in buffer tilde, so we need to index all those values of buffer. So we'll do that with a counter. And this will be the count that goes to it. Now, counter needs to know the amount of samples to write uh, and the amount of samples to write is the size of a buffer now we don't know the size of a buffer in samples we know that in milliseconds it's um, 4000 milliseconds but in samples we don't know but you don't need to know because gentler does gentler does that for you like how we have info tilde in outside gen we have um, something called dim inside gen if I just say dim, delay, here you go, 
it's going to give me the length in samples and we're going to put that into the count limit now count needs something to note like start right to start writing and we're going to give it a one so it's going to start writing and to start or stop the delay effect we're going to do something like this And then just give an n2 operate comment toggle to start effect that's good so now if you want to see what our counter is doing we can do that easily with a number tilde object so if I instantiate a number tilde here you should see zero. If I give a toggle over here, you see it's counting up. And it'll be counting up to the amount of samples. Okay, that's good. Now that is us writing into the buffer, right? That, that's us writing into the buffer, but now we need to read back the buffer at a, up at a certain time. So we'll do that with the peak object. With the same delay, name. <sighs> okay, now this is the sample index to be read, and this is the channel offset. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the counter. So we have one master counter to even read back. But what we're going to do over here is we're going to take and receive count but we're going to scale this count backwards so we say scale okay so that's the amount that you want to scale and this is the input low input high so the i know, I know that the input low is zero And I know that the input high is this, the dimension of our buffer. But, we'll, but what we're going to do is we're going to scale that backwards. So it's going to read backwards from that. Now you can also do the, what I, what we can, easier way to do it is to do this. But for some reason that didn't work for me, but if someone finds out how to do that, please let me know. Cool. So this will read it backwards. But now, we don't want to read it backwards at the same time. We want to read it backwards after a certain amount. Um, I'm just going to put an abs over here so that, so that we don't get any values in negative. Okay. And basically you want to subtract this at a certain at a certain time that you want to read back the buffer at. And the way that we do that is we have the param object. So I'm gonna say param, I'm gonna call it delay time. I'm gonna instantiate to be 500 milliseconds. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to bring this param over here and this param that we're going to send is going to be in milliseconds so we need to do ms to samps so that is going to go into samples because channel works on samples but we humans don't know how to make that calculation in samples cool so that is the output the sample the sample delay now the sample delay if we try it out let's see out one let's see adc3 because i've got something set up over here let's see gain toga oh you see it's already started to write our buffer, which is great. Let's 
do easy, not easy, I think easy deck. But I also need to like call this output so people can hear it. And do that with this. And to number three. That's my voice. And we can bring this up. Lie. Piping it out from here. You can hear that it's playing it back after five milliseconds, but we can't hear the original signal. The original signal, which we will fix really soon. Cool. Now it's playing it back, but it's just playing it back once. We need to delay that. We need to delay that out that output. So the way that we do that is we build a delay in Gen, which is very easy to do since. There's an app, there's an object called delay. Now, delay takes a few arguments. One is how long you want the buffer to be. So we can say that we want it to be the sample rate. Uh, now, when we say sample rate is going to make a buffer that's one second long. But since our reverse delay buffer is four seconds, we can just make this four seconds. Say add the rate feedback one. So there's some, feed, there's some feedback happening over here. Now what we need to do is over here we take the delayed sig the delayed signal, but over here is where we tell the time. So we just take this, which is the original delay time, and we just pipe that to both places. So that's good. We'll take this over here to delay the signal. Now we want like a small little um Filter going, filter going on to each consecutive uh, repeat is more muffled than the previous one, and we can do that with history and mix. So if you pipe this in over here, you pipe this here and take it back and mix it with itself. That gives you like a really um, simple low pass filter. Cool. Then we need to. Do some kind of feedback. So if you multiply this by 0 0.6, all these can be changed, and you can also control them externally with the param or object if you want. Um, then let's do a DC block and let's do a clip minus one button. Just for safe, just to like not kill our ears if something hap if something hap happens. Oh, I'm just rolling really slow. Cool. And let's take this like that. Now this is the original signal. This is the delayed signal. The delayed signal. I'm gonna mix that uh, together. So we can do a mix here, 0.5. That's that. Now, what we also want to do is we want to control the dry and wet amount. So we can do that by saying send signal. I haven't tried this yet. We can say receive signal over here, and we can do a mix again. Now here we can use a param object, so we can say param dry wet, and let's instantiate at zero point five. Let's say minimum zero maximum one. Now the good thing of the param object is that you don't need to draw that line or you don't need to connect that patch card, you can just give it the name over here, so you say dry underscore red. So now this will be our dry signal and this will be our wet signal. That's good. And this is our output that's mixed together. Cool. 
now if we play it let me get this so we can control the drawing a bit and we can also control our delay time oh sorry wrong delay time And drive it, let's make a slider. Don't need that to be that big. And for the delay time, let's just put a floating box. As you can see, it's still continuously riding. So let's keep this one in the middle. Let's keep this at 600. Now, if you jump back to live, There you go. And that's how you make a reverse slay using gentle love. Have fun.